Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on... Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. Be prepared, fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride! Because there's pretty boys along the way. Oh my god, this... Oh, uh, wow, this show is just perfect! Yeah, it has its problems, but you know what I mean. It's just... Wow, they pulled it off. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things that could have gone wrong with this concept. And so far, they haven't happened. No, they are doing a good job of maintaining just enough of taking itself seriously that you like, I get this. But then they do something you're like, oh, God, this is so funny because it's so awkward in the most beautiful of ways. <laughs> For those who haven't seen the series yet, a brief overview. Take the magical girl genre. Make everyone a boy. Keep the costumes ridiculous. Keep everything about a magical girl show. And have some self-referential humor and genre-related humor. And references to other shows from other types of genres in a perfect way. <laughs> yes. All right. So now, if you haven't seen it yet, we're getting into spoiler territory. So go to Crunchyroll and come back. <laughs> we'll be waiting. I would do the Jeopardy theme, but I might get flagged. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, the Battle Lovers. This sounds like it could be a hentai. Quite. I mean, come on, battle lovers? Mm hmm And your transformation phrase is lovemaking? <laughs> and you have to kiss your love bracelet to transform. Love is now over! <laughs> yeah. Yamoto is crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. Just the first episode I was watching it going, oh... Oh, this is, they're doing it. They're pulling it off. Oh my God, I am laughing my ass off because of how ridiculous this is. But she's like, wait, 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 wait. We never agreed to this. You didn't even give us a chance to decide. I was like, how did you manage? Are, are you being forced to say that? Wait, what are you doing? Oh no, not you too. <laughs> that was great. The, uh, I don't want to. Then suddenly, pose, say, fantastically corny line. <laughs> Why are you doing? Oh my God, I'm doing it too. <laughs> yes. Live for love, die for love, love is all. <laughs> oh, and they've got those great personalities, too. <laughs> the young, rambunctious one who apparently is really innocent has no idea what he's doing, apparently. Yeah, I think the term for him is a boy Lolita. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the first two we got introduced to who were talking about some type of uh, Japanese dish. Yes, they were talking about um, Chippewabu as part of Odin. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up being the monster, and you're like, oh, I get it! <laughs> like, oh, that was rather interesting and self-referential, and I wonder if every episode's going to be food-related, because these guys seem to talk about food a lot. Oh, and, and then you have the two I just mentioned. One's the classic, I'm a bit of a geek, <laughs> quite smart. And then the, uh, I don't really care about things. I could be wearing one of those. I wear my shirt unbuttoned because I'm cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then you have the other two. The money-obsessed one and the girl-obsessed one. And I love how the show keeps putting them together as a, like, they like, like each other, but you know they don't because they keep, like, internal monologuing, like, why is this going on? <laughs> <laughs> it almost makes me wonder that maybe it's part of the love power. <laughs> <laughs> well... I think it's just the show. You know, the creators of the show had to be aware that everyone was going to be shipping everyone. So why not just throw some stuff out there? It falls under the cover of fan service, mm -hmm. as do the transformation sequences and the <laughs> bath scenes and certain other events. <laughs> oh, and don't forget the cuddling. <laughs> yeah. That poor wombat alien creature. <laughs> Yeah, that that doesn't fall under fan service. That falls under hilariously disturbing. <laughs> uh, what also falls under hilariously disturbing is wait, 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 wait. He killed him. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's basically a zombie robot. Not really robot, but he does have apparently advanced alien technology in his system that apparently is supposed to be repairing him, but we don't know except for. One of the most recent episodes where, hey, he's walking around on his own, except he doesn't feel anything. He's walking around in bear traps! <laughs> yeah, so he really doesn't feel anything because he should be screaming in pain, not walking around going, where am I? And for reference, because we don't know how long the series is going to go on, that was episode 7. Yeah, which is where we're 
pretty much both up to. <laughs> and we're just enjoying every episode as it comes out. So any more um, thoughts on any specific episodes? <laughs> Episode 3, why does an all-boys school have a pretty boy contest? <laughs> oh yeah, that one. <laughs> and every month, no less. It's like, wait, 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 they have a pretty boy contest, and now everyone's like, oh. And speaking of that, the things they did to get people to vote for them, specifically Ryu, how he goes up to the three triplets? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I shouldn't say three triplets, because it's kind of redundant. He goes up to yeah. the triplets, and I'm like, what is he going to do? Why is he suddenly... Oh, he's giving them a reason not to do chores. I get it now, because he's breaking everything. <laughs> Actually, I pretty much got up when he broke the first thing. I was like, oh, I see what he's doing. I know, but it really wasn't what you were expecting, which was awesome. Basically, everything that everyone pulled in that episode was not what you were expecting. I mean, Eo's approaching a guy in the bathroom going, what do you think of me? And he's holding his tablet in a very awkward spot so that you think he's doing something else, but instead he's showing off his stock portfolio. And that is not a euphemism. <laughs> Maybe he's compensating for something. <laughs> He's money obsessed and he's stylish, but he's friends with Ryu. You're right, he could be compensating for something. <laughs> and speaking of compensating for something, there was that great scene in the one episode where they were all turned young and he goes, I'm going to get you back for making that small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, would you like to go over their names, titles, and rank? <laughs> sure, why not? So, Yumoto, the Sparkling Prince, Battle Lover Crimson. Atsuki, the Piercing Prince, Battle Lover Epinard, which, by the way, is French for spinach. <laughs> Ryu, the Thrilling Prince, Battle Lover Vesta. Io, nah, Io? Io, the Roaring Prince, Battle Lover Sulfur. And Yufin, the Flashing Prince, Battle Lover Cerulean. <laughs> and every time I hear Cerulean, I keep thinking of Cerulean City. <laughs> Yeah, but it just means blue. Mm -hmm. It's funny because Crimson, Epinard, Cerulean are all colors. Vesta is the name of the Roman goddess of uh, hearth and home, and sulfur is an element. Hmm. Well, at least they have variety. Mm -hmm. You didn't happen to catch the titles and ranks and everything of the bad guys, did you? The one with the white hair, Kinshiro, Chevalier Orite, meaning gold. Artema. The one with the brownish hair, Chevalier Argent, meaning silver. Gero, the one with the pink hair, and the one who looks the most like a girl. <laughs> Chevalier Pearlite, obviously meaning pearl. Uh, that brings up another thing. It's like when we were first looking at the material for when this was announced, we were like, are we sure this is all pretty boys? Because even though we watched a lot of anime ourselves, we're still like questioning, like, that one kind of looks like a girl. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was really questioning it the most on Gero, mainly because the pink hair and it was so long and stylish. Mm -hmm. But I find it interesting that we have someone with pink hair on both teams. We have Ryu and then we have Gero, who both have pink hair. Mm -hmm. uh, I love how apparently the bad guys are there to make the world theirs or something by making everyone miserable? I'm not quite sure their plan here. It just seems like it's such a wacky plan. Yeah, it, it seems like there's different aspects to the plan because Zendar seems to very clearly want to remove all love from the world where Kinshiro and the others seem to be more interested in perfection and consider most of the school beneath them. So they just want to get rid of everyone they consider uh, lower than them, which is everyone. Oh, and that reminds me of the fact that there's actually some backstory going on there. Two little hints that keep giving that the blue-haired one and the white-haired one uh, used to know each other, and now they're on opposite sides. It's kind of great. Yeah, well, they from everything that we've seen, it looks like they were childhood friends, so at some point they drifted apart. And that's probably the root of Kinshiro's problem, and it'll probably be fixed when they attack the battle lovers to the point of detransforming them, so that the scrambling technology is no longer hiding their face and Kinshiro can see that he just beat the crap out of his former childhood friend. Uh, speaking of that, that's like great. It's like, wait a minute. Why doesn't anyone know their identities? Oh, it's because when anyone looks at them, their faces and voices get scrambled. And it looks like, oh my, it's like, wow, censoring, that's wonderful. 
and apparently it happens on both sides. They must have their own high-tech technology. Did they just announce themselves and leave? What? <laughs> yes, well, it's a very standard villain thing to do. But, you know, this also explains why they can't identify each other even though they know each other. Yeah, but then there was the one episode where they basically transformed right in front of them because they were obviously watching the battlefield before the transformation happened, and then they transformed, and you're like, wait, how did... Is there something that goes on where, like, maybe clones run off or something? I don't know. There may be more to this concealing technology. <laughs> yeah, there has to be something to protect them during the actual transformation, because they also transform basically in front of everyone in episode three, though nobody would be bothering to notice because everyone was trying to date the swan. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how... Uh, they, they also do the trope that some of the team fall for whatever trick that's going on, but they end up beating it in the end because of, like, love. Mm -hmm. uh, they just use so many tropes to great effect in this. You're like, oh my god, they're going for that. Well, they handled that differently than I expected. <laughs> and they never take themselves too seriously for very long, because in what was it, episode four, where we messed with the heating and air conditioning, that could have actually been very dangerous, because... Heat exhaustion is very dangerous, and we could have actually done some serious harm and serious potential harm here. And then I suddenly remembered the episode where they were basically trying to entertain and keep the journalism team from finding out who they were, and they end up going, oh shoot, there's a monster! Um, here! Hold this guy for us! Uh, he- don't worry, he's okay, uh, we gotta run! <laughs> No, it was like, oh my god, he's not breathing. Here, stay with him. Our club is going to go get help, all five of us, and leave you here with a corpse <laughs> so that you won't follow us. Mysterious photography club that may be a third power in the group because they have that weird looking fish thing. Mm, and then they go and basically go, okay, monster, we have no time to deal with you. We're killing you right now. That okay? We're hearing, we're, you're all healed and everything? Okay, that's good. We gotta go back now. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, let's hurry. You know, and then we also had the fun of, oh, yeah, I'm going to quit the group. I got a better offer. <laughs> yeah, they're going to pay me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so also, I'm not going to have time to be a battle lover. So, yeah, you guys are on your own for fighting. And then the rest of Rio's teammates are so mean. They're just watching him get tickled to death. <laughs> I love I mean, well, he's not I actually being he's not... hurt. So. <laughs> no, but it's still not nice. Mm hmm. And shouldn't you be focused on defeating the monster? You know, and since your attacks don't really hurt people, you know, why don't you just attack it? Except that you can't because Ryu is being held by the monster and Sulphur's not there, so you're missing two of the battle wands to make your ultimate weapon. Mm hmm But you guys couldn't have done something? <laughs> yeah, I think one of them even said, it looks like he's kind of enjoying it. <laughs> and that yeah. actually made me go, wait, 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 wait. So this monster's tickling, oh... God, thank you for referencing, referencing that, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> thank God he's not a high school girl. Uh, yeah, that's one trope I think the series could probably do without. <laughs> Especially considering that Vesta is one of the two who has shorts instead of pants for his battle outfit. <laughs> uh. Oh, yes. Talk about fun. The obligatory beach slash swimsuit episode. <laughs> and I love how they're like, um, I think there's a rule about shirts on there, so we need to go out and tell him to put a shirt on. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of embarrassing, and he's like, you guys are late. Um, no, actually, we've been here. We just couldn't bring ourselves to approach you because you're being ridiculous. <laughs> And then we end up at a uh, very unique beach <laughs> with more fan service. I love how they're like, how he's like, oh, didn't you plan this? Yeah, but I thought I was going to this kind of beach, but apparently we ended up at this kind of beach. Especially with that one guy goes, oh, you're trying to find that beach? And I was like, oh, you're trying to find a beach? Here, come with us. Because, you know, you're five guys and you're all together. So, of course, you must come to our kind of beach. And they're damn hot. <laughs> And that reminds me of the fact that the rich bad guys are like, you know, that's too noisy. You know, I'm going to go talk to the owner and see if I can't buy up the beaches around here. Would that make you happy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that whole thing was just cute. And I keep worrying about the body of the teacher. Because <laughs> all that alcohol was like, he was drinking. And it's like, dude, you can really hold your liquor. I know. It's like, that was a lot. And, you know, he's supposed to be recovering. 
you know, and I'm already concerned about his body because, you know, we had an episode where it got all moldy. <laughs> and then they keep leaving it just sitting there by itself in the hot tub. Hot spring, I should say. Oh, I I'm worried by the end of this whole thing, there's going to be, the, the teacher's going to be just bones moving around. <laughs> I thought you were going to fix him. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, and how Crimson just keeps going, we need to do all this stuff. Um, we're, we're, it's not that kind of, we need to have a sleepover because we have this thing and then the beds and then let's do a walk of courage. Let's do a test of courage. Everyone's like, uh, well, not in this kind of situation. I mean, with the whole toothbrush thing. Yeah. And you know, this is just, yeah, let's, let's not because things could happen. This is like totally a setup. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the toothbrush thing, I love how they like they completely reference Detective Conan. They even have the going out to commercial and coming back from commercial animations. That was a nice touch, and I do like how we subtly find out who it was at the end. Mm -hmm. Because the entire time, the space wombat <laughs> is taking pictures like crazy. We must remember this! And then there was those fun and some of them awkward scenes during the Test of Courage. And I love how they keep referencing for fan service those two. Like, well, basically the the two main pairs: the blue-haired guy, uh, the blue-haired guy with the glasses, and the tough guy apparently are a pair. <laughs> and then the yellow hair and pink hair are together as a couple. At least they're doing all these hints, but they're actually not. Especially since there's that one point of like, I really like girls. I wish a girl was doing this. Oh wait, then I would like the girl to be actually doing it to me like this. <laughs> Yeah. And then we have that wonderfully awkward scene that you're not quite sure to laugh at or just be scared of. Yeah, with uh, Yamoto and Wombat, and you're just like, really? And he's the one who's like totally sexually innocent because he didn't get anything that was going on at the beach, <laughs> including that invitation from that crossdresser. Oh yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> When she, when he showed up, or he showed up, or it showed up, I was like, oh my god, that's awesome! <laughs> I didn't expect that at all. That's just wicked. Oh, you're cool, Mrs. Mister? I love how even he was like, I don't know. Mrs. is okay. Okay, Mrs. <laughs> oh, overall, this show is just gold. <laughs> and so far, it hasn't really had a bad episode. It's had some slow parts in episodes, but... Overall, it's just a really solid show. It knows what it is, and it's enjoying it. Yeah, and, you know, they even say in the first episode, well, you know, we may as well go along with it and call a farce a farce. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, and it's nice to watch an anime where I'm not constantly mentally filtering out upshots of girls' skirts. <laughs> Yep, that's always a plus. Oh, wait, I'm a boy. Um, <laughs> well, this has been our thoughts on... Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. Thanks for listening. If you like Lex's art, you can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with this podcast and get other tidbits, you can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like this podcast? Leave a friendly comment below. Also, this is YouTube, so please subscribe. If you would like some art of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description. Be prepared, fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride! Because there's pretty boys along the way. It would be less bumpy if the recorder would have started recording. I just now got mine going. <laughs> That's okay, because all I need to do is hear the sultry tones of my beautiful voice. <laughs> Who are you, the guy from Honest Trailers? <laughs> Probably not. Cute High Defense Club Love. You missed a couple words. It's Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. Cute High Defense Club Love. Lub? Lub, lub, lub. <laughs> you also forgot Earth. <laughs> Cute, which the boys are. High, the school they're in. Earth, the planet they're on. Defense, what they're doing. Club, what their cover is. Love, what their power is. <laughs> Lots of bloopers this episode. This has been our thoughts on Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. <laughs> Did I get it that time? Yes.